Welcome. This is the wisdom of the Avatar Gita. Ramana Maharshi was widely regarded to exemplify its teachings. Listen, reflect, and deeply meditate. Know yourself. This is Richard Clark. Today I'll read from and comment on Chapter 1, verses 57 and 58 about the unshakable equanimity of the self and provide inquiries for each verse to deepen your experience. Verse 57. The yogis regard righteousness, prosperity, desire for paradise and liberation and also the moving and fixed objects as mere will-o'-the-wisps. Verse 58, the avidhut in unshakable equanimity, living in the holy temple of nothingness, walks naked, knowing all to be Brahman. My comments. Let's explore these verses from the Avatrit Gita in the context of Ramana Maharshi's teachings and Advaita Vedanta. Verse 57. The yogis regard righteousness, prosperity, desire for paradise and liberation, and also the moving and fixed objects as mere will-o'-the-wisps. Verse 57 highlights the perspective of a realized being, the avidhut, who has transcended all conventional ideas and limitations, as well as desires for worldly fulfillment. This verse speaks to the insignificance of well-intentioned conventional pursuits such as righteousness, material prosperity, seeking paradise or liberation. Liberation, lasting happiness and peace, is not to be found in the entire world of objects, since they are all illusory and transitory. All these pursuits are actions in the world. Though acting with good intention, this doesn't take us where we want to go, since nothing in the world actually touches us. We know it, but are untouched by it. Since we are untouched like the screen by the movie, then how can actions in the world help us spiritually? What actually helps is self-knowledge from direct experience as being in consciousness, direct experience of true being. Actions in the world can ready the mind for spiritual practice it's not the practice itself. Practice is internal, within oneself. Inquire. Who is the one that perceives righteousness, prosperity, desire, and objects? Can I the perceiver, truly finds lasting fulfillment in all these transient phenomena? Verse 58. The avidhut in unshakable equanimity, living in the holy temple of nothingness, walks naked, knowing all to be Ramon. Verse 58 depicts the avidhut in unwavering equanimity, who sees the entire universe as 
only the ultimate reality, Brahman, existence, and consciousness itself. The Abbotthood is in the holy temple of Nithiness, signifying Verse 58 depicts the abbot Hutt in unwavering equanimity who sees the entire universe as only the ultimate reality, Brahman, existence and consciousness itself. The abbot Hutt is in the holy temple of nothingness, signifying the state of emptiness or non-conceptual non-objective awareness. The Abhidhut walks naked, symbolizing a complete lack of identification with the body or any external form, and perceives the underlying unity in all existence. This underlying unity is the self. Inquire, what is the nature of this I that identifies with the body and the external world? Can I strip away all conceptual layers and directly experience the holy temple of nothingness within me? In both these verses, there's a profound emphasis on shifting your focus from the transitory and illusory aspects of existence to the deeper, unchanging reality of the self. A key principle in both Ramana Maharshi's teachings and Advaita Vedanta. This is what you're trying to do with your practice and self-inquiry looking to know what is always there. It's kind of funny that we don't see this, since it's what is always there. Our view is just clouded by the ideas we take to be real, like the idea of existing as an individual, set off against the entire world and universe. So inquire, know yourself, and be always free and at peace. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this Ramana Maharshi video, subscribe, like, and send me a comment.